The Lord be with you. How good it is to be here this evening as we gather again around God's word and sacraments. It's a blessing to receive the gift of salvation, of life and eternity in Him. Our order of service this evening is Divine Setting 3. Uh, we welcome those of you that are joining us from home and or wherever you may be, and we invite you to download the order of service which is in the link right below your picture. And let's begin by singing our opening hymn, hymn number 726, Evening and Morning. Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching Him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. Amen. 
O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserve thy temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. And upon this your confession, I by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority forgive you all of your sins. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble and he delivered them from their distress. Then they were glad that the waters were quiet, and he brought them to their desired haven. Let them extol him in the congregation of the people, and praise him in the assembly of the elders. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them from their distress. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. the Lord, we acclaim you. You are the eternal Father. All creation worships you. You are the angels, all the powers of heaven. Cherubim and seraphim sing in endless praise. Oh, holy Holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. The glorious company of apostles praise you. The noble fellowship of prophets praise you. The white-robed army of martyrs praise you. Who all the world, the holy church acclaims you. Father of a majesty unbounded, your true and only Son, Worthy of all worship, at the Holy Spirit, Advocate and Guide. You, Christ, are the King of glory, the eternal Son of the Father. When you became man to set us free, you did not spurn the virgin's womb. You overcame the sting of death and opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. You are seated at God's right hand in the glory we believe that you will come and be our judge. Come then, Lord, and help your people 
bought with the price of your own blood, and bring us with your saints to glory everlasting. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. Almighty God, in your mercy, guide the course of this world so that your church may joyfully serve you in godly peace and quietness. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Please be seated. The Old Testament reading for the fourth week of Pentecost is from the book of Job, the 38th chapter. Then the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind and said, Who is this that darkens counsel by words without knowledge? Dress for action like a man. I will question you, and you make it known to me. Where were you when I laid the foundations of the earth? Tell me, if you have understanding. Who determined its measurements? Surely you know. And who stretched the line upon it? Oh, what were its base sunk? And who laid its cornerstone? When the morning stars sang together, and all the songs of God shouted for joy. Or who shut in the sea with the doors when it burst out from the womb, when it made clouds its garment and thick darkness its swallowing hand, and prescribed limits, for it has set bars and doors and said, thus far, shall you come and no further, and there shall your proud waves be stayed. This is the word of the Lord. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised, and his greatness is unsearchable. On your wondrous works I will meditate, and I will declare your The epistle is from the second letter to the church at chapter 6. Working together with him then, we appeal to you not to receive the grace of God in vain. For he says, in a favorable time, I listened to you, and in the day of salvation I have helped you. Behold, now is the favorable time. Behold, now is the day of we put no obstacle in anyone's way so that no fault may be found within our ministry. But as servants of God, we commend ourselves in every way by great endurance in afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labors, sleepless nights, hunger, by purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, the Holy Spirit's genuine love, by truthful speech, and the power of God with the weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left, through honor and dishonor, through slander and praise, we are treated as impostors and yet are true, as unknown and yet well-known, as dying and behold, we live, as punished and yet not killed, as sorrowful, yet always rejoicing, as poor yet making many rich, as having nothing yet possessing everything. 
We have spoken freely to you, Corinthians. Our heart is wide open. You are not restricted by us, but you are restricted in your own afflictions, affections. In return, I speak as to children. Widen your hearts also. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand. Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the fourth chapter. On that day, when evening had come, he said to them, Let us go across to the other side. And leaving the crowd, they took him with them in the boat, just as he was. And other boats were with him. And a great windstorm arose, and the waves were breaking into the boat, so that the boat was all filling. But he was in the stern, asleep on the cushion. And they woke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? And he awoke and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased. And there was a great calm. He said to them, Why are you so afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great fear and said to one another, Who then is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? This is the gospel of the Lord. Continue with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead, he ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated for our hymn of the day. Number 819 in Lutheran service book, sing praise to God, the highest good.
Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The text for our meditation this afternoon, today's epistle from 2 Corinthians chapter 6. In the name of Jesus, amen. Luther was opposed to what's known as corporate confession. That part of the service in which we all confess our sins together in sort of a a generic way. We admit that we're sinners in need of forgiveness, but we don't get very specific about what our own particular sins are. We do give ourselves a few seconds of silence to contemplate our sins and lay them at Jesus' feet, but personally, I never find the time allotted to be sufficient. Luther's primary objection to corporate confession was that once the church started doing this, no one would come to private confession anymore. See, it's in private confession that we actually get to take the time to unload the sins that burden our conscience, to confess specific sins, and then to receive a very specific absolution. Lutheran Service Book has made this process far easier than it used to be by including a brief liturgy for the private confession of sins. But I can tell you that Luther was absolutely right in his concerns, for in our day hardly anybody takes advantage of this opportunity. And that's sad for a number of reasons. For one thing, it's, it's sad because people are missing out on some very expressive, very candid, very revealing words that are spoken in private confession. Words like these. I have not let God's love have its way with me, and so my love for others has failed. There is so much truth in that one little phrase. It reflects what Paul says in today's epistle. I have been restricted by my own affections. Now this is not to say that we have no love for God or for one another, but we set limits on our love. We build a a fence around our affections which no one, not even ourselves, can climb over. Our love only goes so far. There's only so much we're willing to do for our neighbor and astonishingly, there's only so much we're willing to do for God. We limit our love That's God's own verdict against us. We are restricted by our own affections. Why do we do this? Because as we confess in the private confession, I have lived as if God did not matter and as if I mattered most. This is more than just doing a few things wrong. This is not losing your temper or speaking harshly when you get frustrated or forgetting to send your father a Father's Day card. This is a fundamental elevating of ourselves to a position of prominence that eclipses even God. How does our preeminent attitude shape the way we live? How does, it, how does it influence the way we treat others? For instance, how, how does it affect our generosity? Do we always give sacrificially with joy? 
Or do we give begrudgingly because, you know, we'll look like a cad if our neighbor can't feed his family? Or, or because the church really needs a roof? And so on and so forth. Are there particular people that we're more willing to help than others? Well, I don't like his politics. Or she's not the right color. Or she got pregnant out of wedlock. Or he's not the right kind of Lutheran. I'm not judging, beloved. Because I have some of the same thoughts. But are they good thoughts? I don't think so. How about kindness in general? In private confession, the confessor says, there are those whom I have hurt and those whom I have failed to help. Are there those to whom you give a, a thin smile and then keep right on walking, intentionally choosing not to show love to them for whatever reason? Maybe he talks too much. Maybe she won't listen. Maybe you don't have anything in common. In today's epistle, God is telling you that the problem might not actually be with the other person. The problem might be you. You may be restricted by your affections. And I'm right there with you. These examples may seem minor, but that's really the point. We often think of our sins in, in large terms. You know, you even hear people say, I'm not that bad a sinner. I never killed anyone. See, sin is more than the things we consider big. The little sins are just as hurtful to others and just as damaging to our relationship with God. Now, some might think that limiting our love isn't as bad as not loving at all. But today's epistle doesn't refer to our complete failure to love. It addresses the calculated limitation we place on our love. You are restricted by your own affections, Paul says. You and I are boxed in Beloved, inhibited, restricted, restrained in our love. What is it that restricts us? Our own interests, our own concerns, the short list of things we actually want to love, which doesn't include God or our neighbor. You see, it all comes back to living as if God didn't matter and as if I mattered most. Yes, it's, it's hard for me to love someone else fully and completely when loving myself requires so much of my time and attention. I have not let God's love have its way with me. And so my love for others has failed. There are those whom I have hurt and those whom I have failed to help. My thoughts and desires have been soiled with sin. This is not a good place to be, beloved. 
And God's word through the Apostle Paul further convicts us with the admonition to widen our hearts. He's telling us to tear down our favorite fence. He, he wants us to open the locked gate and make our survival resources available to our neighbor. I don't know about you, but God might as well tell me to sell all that I have and give to the poor. He says, widen your heart, but mine feels as thick as the walls of Jericho. Good luck breaking down that wall, God. And have a better chance rebuking the wind and telling the sea to be still. Thank God today's gospel gives us some relief from today's epistle. After all, the God who tells us to widen our hearts is the same God that told the storm to be still. And what happened? The wind ceased and there was a great calm. Wind is wild and disobedient. And yet a single word from Jesus calms it down. I am locked up tight, resolute and restricted by my own affections. But even the wind and waves obey Jesus. His word has its way with them. If his word softens the obstinate wind, surely it can soften me too. Jesus' word changes the will of the waves. His words have the same power to change your will and mine. You see, when God said to the wind and the waves, peace, be still, a miracle took place. The miraculous power of God's word calmed the sea. The sea no longer had any reason to rage and foam with its Lord and Creator standing there in its midst. In the same way God says to you today, widen your hearts. And with these words, another miracle takes place. Just as the miraculous power of God's word calmed the sea, so also will it widen your heart. After all, what do you have to fear? Why hide behind the limitation of your affections when your Lord and Creator stands? So near. God gave you his infinite and limitless love when Jesus died on the cross. Not only are your sins forgiven, not only has he continued to show his love to you throughout your life, but there's plenty more love and forgiveness where that came from. God's love for you will never run out. His forgiveness will never fade. There's no need for you or me to restrict ourselves by our own affections. God gives you daily bread, beloved. Everything you need to support this body and life. Whatever you give away, He's more than able to replace sevenfold. Whatever you lose, he's more than able to repay. 
peace. Be still. Don't be afraid. Beloved, we all have to admit that we have not let God's love have its way with us. And so our love for others has failed. But thanks be to God, He will not cease speaking His words to us. He says to us, widen your hearts. Just as He said to the wind, peace, be still. And if wind and waves are nothing for Him, neither is my Jericho heart. Dear God, faithfully widen what we cannot. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please stand. The peace of God that passes all understanding. Keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. God of our salvation, you have ushered in the favorable time and day of salvation through the incarnation of our Lord Jesus Christ. Support all your ministers and remove all obstacles from hearing and believing the word they preach. Let your grace be proclaimed through every hardship, struggle, and suffering, and encourage us by the example of many saints to consider ourselves rich and alive despite every opposition. For since we have Christ, we possess everything. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, open wide the hearts of Christians to one another especially within the home and between neighbors. Let love be genuine, speech truthful, and patience constant. Let us commend ourselves in everything as those known by God's love and therefore unashamed to serve one another. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious Father, you see that we are perishing. Yet you bid us to set our fears aside and trust in you for the sake of Christ, by whose blood we have received peace for our troubled consciences. 
Do not reject our prayers for their faithlessness, but teach us to trust in you fully. Give your protection and peace to those in need, especially Judy Krause, Lynn Olson, Jeff Briggs, Jim Perry, Dan Schultz, Mona Barkey, Mary Voigt, Ronald Virtuo Sr., Brenda Kempf, Rose Kozlowski, Pastor Ronald Meyer, Charity Gerard, Ruth Wright, Carrie Lindsner, Joan Reinke, Tom Drum, Janine Jandry, Sherry Brico Tobin, Michael Hastings, Jim Whitman, Bud Shergi, Carlton Borkert, Merle Weber, Shelley Holowinski, Pastor Michael Allmeyer, Dennis Durkee, Jackie Kislewski, Levi Cruz, Joyce Virchow, Pastor Timothy Kinney, Michelle Mahoney, Jeff Dion, Sue Maynard, Donna Meese, Sally Bolin, Kathy Rigotti, Diane Olson, Frank Erdman, Alan Monteufel, Debbie Monteufel, Shirley Fleischer, Dan Shale, Ann Keller, Jeannie Juvi, Walter Brinkman, Jerry Piotter, Lana Gast, Scott Donchi, Sandy Romer, Scott Steenport, Norb Pomerenke, and Brooke Schrader. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Bless those celebrating birthdays this week, David Little, Barbara Richardson, Gary Bartlemy, Cora Henson, Ezra Tools, Braylon Boss, and Ron Kraus. And those with wedding anniversaries, Kenneth and Helen Mydam, Larry and Barbara Shavey, Mike and Deborah Bursack, Lee and Juliet Colby, Tony and Shelley Van Ark, Reverend Keith and Valerie Giroux, Tyler and Erica Sickles, Canon Liz Camprath, Craig and Jill Thomas, Leroy and Barbara Bartell, and Tom and Sheila Hanby. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Father in heaven, we ask your blessing upon our earthly fathers. May they be blessed by you and gifted by your Holy Spirit to raise their children in the fear and admonition of the Lord. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Grant your blessing, O Lord, on the answers in Genesis ministry as they endeavor to defend your word from the very first verse. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Holy Lord, we join with the sons of God and shout for joy as Christ Jesus gives to us his true body and blood in the Lord's Supper. Let us not doubt, but firmly believe your words that you formed our world and its matter and you know well how to be present for us for our forgiveness in this sacrament. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. These and whatever else you would have us to ask of you, O God, grant us for the sake of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is meet and right so to do. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death and the grave, 
and by his glorious resurrection open to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Take and eat the true body of our Lord Jesus.
the true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you steadfast in the one true faith, the life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. salvation which thou hast prepared for the face of all people light to light and the gentiles and the glory of thy people Give thanks unto the Lord, for He is good. And His mercy endureth forever. Let us pray. We give thanks to You, Almighty God, that You've refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore You that of Your mercy You would strengthen us through the same in faith towards You and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, Your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Bless we the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen, amen, amen. Please be seated. Happy Father's Day. God bless you and give you uh, great blessings amongst your children and uh, you know those of us who have lived a little bit longer than others, grandchildren. Uh, just a reminder that a week from Tuesday, so it'll be the 29th of June at 6.30, right here is our uh, annual voters meeting, meeting to discuss and approve the uh, operating budget for the coming year. Uh, Pastor, do you have anything to add to that or anything else you'd like to uh, share? Two things. First of all, next Tuesday, so this coming Tuesday, LWML has their monthly meeting and Norm Pomeranke will be here talking about his uh, time as a member here at Trinity uh, his growth and life in Christ, and he will be here answering questions. And if you've ever heard Norb talk, uh, Norb can tell stories. We're probably going to have to cut him off about midnight. <laughs> 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 but um, please come and join us for that. If you cannot come to that but would like to join, um, it will be available through Zoom. And just call the church office and uh, let one of the ladies in the church office know and they will make sure that you get on the list for the Zoom. And then finally, uh, next weekend, we're going to have a very special celebration of my brother's anniversary as he celebrates 30 years of ministry uh, and we give thanks and praise to God for Man, that. that sounds like a long time. Yeah. <laughs> That must mean you're getting old. I must be. 
So anyway, we invite you to join us for that. Indeed. One thing about the meeting, uh, there are agenda sheets in the back. If you'd like to pick one up ahead of time and look, they're on the ledge in the back. Let's, uh, let's now sing our closing hymn, hymn number 722, Lord, take my hand and lead me. I know. 